So I'm down at Precision Golf today. I've heard a lot of really, really quite cool and interesting things about what these guys do here. Um, can't wait to find out for myself. Let's get in there. Let's do this. So ultimately we sell performance um, and it doesn't necessarily mean selling equipment. Um, if there was a swing fault that would have a far more dramatic impact on performance then we'd obviously advocate making those changes before, before any equipment changes. It could be somebody who's always suffered from a, an injury where we could refer them to our biomechanics specialist yeah. for a rehab program. It could be fitness, so our advanced personal trainer Kate, she uh, instructs uh, golfers and non-golfers improving their strength, mm. core stability, mm. power. Um, stamina on the course, a lot of people flag around for yeah. 40, 40, 40, 50, 50, 50, 15 holes yeah. and then it all yeah. goes horribly wrong. You'd be surprised at a lot of standards as well, people will say, you know, I was having such a good round yeah. and I, you know, I was level through 14 holes and, and then I just really messed up the last three. Yeah, they don't, yeah. they don't understand that that is from performance and yeah. like I says, that's why biomechanics or personal training, whatever it might be, that might be the key to getting some better performance and it might be you know new equipment or it might just be taking what you've got in a subtle rebuild so you know getting the swing weights all matched out perfectly getting the lie angles you know that's a massive one getting everything blended through the set you know when we get stuff for people to use it's I want you to be as comfortable hitting your four iron as you are hitting your six as you are hitting your wedges it shouldn't be a yeah decrease in performance anyway it should be as comfortable with one as the other and that is where you know the quality of the build shop and the workshop uh, and the work they do in there is what sort of sets us apart, yeah. I believe, is the fitting's great and the advice is great and getting it all together with that sort of final touch of getting the getting it built perfectly, that's that's the key for a lot of people. Just to make life simple. Yeah. Full specs of your clubs, so obviously the basic stuff like length and lie. Uh, and loft, but I'm also getting uh, the swing weight and the CPM here, so that's cycles per minute. Uh, what this gives us is a number, um, and then we can compare apples to apples. Okay, we're getting warmed up, so there's no pressure on the shots. What I'm going to look at with your clubs and everything that we test, like best of the best data. So I want to see on your good swings, yeah. with the good data, what can potential can you get out and also obviously how consistently you can hit it and things like that. So you're in the same sort of boat as me where you kind of have some potential to hit one kind of long left where mm. you as a drawer of the ball where you're closing the face, you're taking off loft, which is good for smash factor and you can get good distance, uh, but you do tend to obviously have the danger of getting that long pulley one um, or having the face a little bit too closed. Strike, you know, that's in a pretty decent place. If you look, if I can pick somewhere, you know, right in the middle, slightly low of center or something would be good. You can see that this number here is, you know, this area here of consistency yeah. is very really large. When you're hitting 10 shots in a row with the same club that your clubs it should be comfortable with, this, this should go red. Your stuff for the length it is, is very head light. Yeah. Okay, that's down to mid-size grips and just how they've been built. But very light in the head. When I see stuff that is too light in the head for people, the general thing that happens is you get variable strikes, 86, 87, 88. Mm. So I know that you should definitely be carrying, you know, 160, 70, 80 up there. So your average at 160 carry is very low. Yeah. And that is backed up by the fact that all of your smash factors are coming out the same. There is a efficiency leak basically there. Yeah. It was really interesting to see from just those eight or ten like practice swings that I did before we got into the actual fitting, that there was a very obvious miss developing, and it's something that I'm I'm very aware of. Tom picked it up almost instantly. It's long and left, but then from the weights that he took, the measurements that he took from my current set, he was able to identify where that miss was kind of why why it was exacerbated by my clubs. It was about that point I think Tom kind of 
got an idea for how he could kind of fix that a little bit through the fitting. He was obviously very, very aware of the different things that he could be throwing into the mix to, yeah, kind of right the wrongs in my swing. First thing he did was put me into a new club head. Um, it was the Titleist T100. That was only because I'm currently gaming 712 AP2s and that's pretty much as close as they're going to get to my club. And then we got into the shafts and that is where it got really interesting. Why? What does it feel like to you? It just it feels, I can feel the head so much better. I mean, like the round leg. When we look at this screen here for your kind of dispersion, yeah. obviously this was a heavier, um, heavier head weight. Yeah. That will show us your club versus this club. Yeah. So you can see, obviously there was that one outlier there, but in, as a whole, your clubs, which I said were extremely light yeah. in the head, are all going left. If we look at the uh, one that we just hit there, uh, again, that is something that... <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that is, that's what we're trying to achieve today. So you can talk all you like about you know, there's some people that say, you know, custom fitting doesn't matter, you need to practice more, you need to get more lessons, etc., etc. All I've done yeah. there is just change a shaft. So for me, custom fitting does matter, because yeah. we haven't even fit you yet, but I could just build you a set with this uh, shaft that we've just put in there, and you definitely play better golf because you're getting better yeah. strike all the time. Um, and, that, and that's not doing anything. That's literally just a shaft change and being a relatively uh, suitable head bow. Um, so you can feel where that head is in transition. Yeah. If you can feel where it is, you're more liable to just put a smooth swing on it and get into position better than struggling with a lighter. So we actually end up going through, I think about six different shafts, all different weights, different stiffnesses, just to see how they performed and how I felt with them. And with some of them, there was you know that instant feedback. So you saw I was getting more length, I was able to swing faster, I was getting better strike. But equally, on the other hand, it was a bit of trial and error and some of them didn't work so well. And it was just a case of working out what does work and what doesn't work. <laughs> numbers overall yeah. you know that last one that we hit there you have got the longest carry mm -hmm. um, and you have got a decent amount of spin I'm, I'm, I'm you've got a nice low launch and everything so efficiency is kind of similar um, but what I would say and the swing speed was up which is good um, definitely some potential there but what I would say is that looking at those numbers is that it took for me quite a while to get to those numbers with some variable strikes in there so when we look at the best of the best, that's what I always do with each shaft, as I explained. Yeah. But for me, it took a little while to get there, and we still, it wasn't a progression of finding the timing, finding the timing, good strike, good strike. Yeah. And then it carried on good. It was finding the timing, a couple of really good strikes, then the worst one, and not as good one. It says to me that that's not comfortable. So after all of that, once we had the, the shafts down and a good idea of the shafts I would be using going forward and the ones that would work best for me, that's when we started playing with the club heads. And it's really quite interesting to see what Tom said about the club heads because, especially for someone like me who, through the fitting, you'll see, yeah, my strike isn't bad. I get quite good strike when I've got the right shaft. The club head we ended up going for was something which I have always longed for, but never really had the confidence to go for because of the stigma around it. It was a Mizuno blade. I'm not saying that a club like this is not more forgiving than this. Obviously it is, okay? You've got a larger body, a larger frame, more perimeter weighting. You've got weight pulled low and back, the tungsten there that's going to help launches and spin rates and everything. However, you've got to take into account what we mean by forgiveness. People come in here and they say, I'm not good enough to get custom fit, or they say, I really like blades, or this club, or that club, but I'm not good enough to hit it. My whole argument is, yes, that's more forgiving. Yes, there's many benefits to that, if you need it in your swing. But you talk about effective hitting area on the face, and you tell me, if you line up those toe marks there, how much more forgiveness are we actually looking at there? Two millimeters? Three millimeters of face? I'd say that's two millimetres probably yeah. of effective hitting area. Yeah. So my argument is if you can hit this roughly in the middle, which as you've seen with a good fit and getting the right kind of build for you, you can come in and go from that kind of strike 
to that kind of strike or this kind of strike if you can hit consistently on the face in the right place yes there's lots of forgiveness to be had in that design if you need it however when you get fit right with the right shaft and the right swing weight this can be just as forgiving so really I'm not saying everyone should play blades you've got to play what's right for you yes that's more forgiving yes that's less forgiving but effective hitting area if you can hit that in the middle of the face you can hit that in the middle of the face and if you're fit correctly this might end up being for you for example more forgiving based on the fact the soul suits your swing you also draw the ball you're shallow into the ball which means you hit a pull draw as your bad shot a club like that has less offset than yeah. this. That then makes this less offset more forgiving for you than the more offset, which a slicer who needs that help that's steep into the ball, that's more forgiving. So forgiveness for me is relative. It's completely relative. It's based on what you need and a good fit. My argument is if you're fit well, you can hit anything. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Plus, blades are gorgeous. Yellow is what you walked in with, red was the T100, so that's a new upgrade of what we've had. And then this uh, pinky colour is this blade that we're using now, the MP20. So you can see how out of those two, they're actually pretty comparative performances. But what I would say is that you can see that there's a lot less front to back dispersion yeah. Yeah, with the back, blade. Back way rather, yeah, so it's going that yeah. way, which is what we said we wanted, because consistent carry means consistent, easy course management where you know what to get out. You know, so if we looked at that, that's probably a fairer distance-wise. Yeah. That you know, from yours we get 160 carry, and the blade we're at 170 carry, and the T100 we're at 180 carry. These clubs, it's the same shaft, just mm. with different heads, but they're also the same head weight. So we've got the same shaft and the same total swing weight. But you can see the differences in performance there will be down to loft. Yeah. Um, and how the ball comes off the face basically um, and again if you looked at that and said right I wanted the blade but I want some more distance we can just take a degree of loft off mm. or a degree and a half and move this entire circle forwards this way so that's why I say once we find the sort of shaft that works well with you it, we can be kind of sympathetic to what you actually want out of it but when one the solution to it is that simple yeah. it's like it's brain, it's not too. you could you could spend an incredibly long time practicing mm. and listening to everybody else saying that you need to spend more time in the range you could batter a thousand balls a day you're never getting this club anywhere near these two yeah. as a fact you know even if you worked on deliveries worked on taking off dynamic loft and getting through the ball you know, maybe you could push it up five ten yards but the consistency still wouldn't be there it would still go left and you wouldn't really get anywhere near those which you know you'll know from today you haven't done anything yeah. you've just been sitting as i said to you at the very beginning standing square with a mat doing stock full swings that's all you've been doing your swing hasn't changed you're still delivering the same sort of numbers the same sort of thing but just by changing equipment we've gained 10 20 yards in the irons and again battled the yeah. Pre prevented the miss that you have you know which can only this can only be a good thing mm. i cannot speak highly enough of that fitting but having never done a proper fitting before i've been into you know, retail outlets and places like that and had i've been on the i've been on the you know, smash board or whatever they call it but that was in depth to a different degree and i definitely reaped the result of that the detail that they went into, that Tom went into with me, on on the irons especially, was baffling really. It really kind of reaffirmed that a club fitting is a science, not an art. It's not a case of, you know, trial and error, see what fits, how do you like it. Yes, that comes into it massively, but when you put the numbers to it, and when you have the gear like they do, suddenly it opens up a whole new world. Let me know in the comments below what you think and if you've ever been fit to that kind of degree before because having walked away from there now, I would advocate massively for anyone to try it if you get the opportunity. So that's all guys, thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel and follow me on other social media platforms. I'm at Golf on Instagram and Twitter. So until next time, see you guys.